So they finally did it. Sony has released their webcam software, which supports a whole bunch of their cameras, including the Alpha series, some of the digital still series, um, and a whole bunch more. The only problem with it, however, is the quality is not great. It doesn't keep a consistent frame rate, and even then, it's below 20 frames per second. But if you are going to be using this for certain use cases like Zoom conference calls or, you know, Skype calls and stuff like that, it's not a bad idea because in reality it's free. You just use your cable that came with your camera, you plug it directly into your computer and you can go ahead and use it. But if you are going to be using your camera for things like live streaming and content creation, then you're probably going to want to listen later on in the video where I make a few other suggestions. Now, let's be honest, if you're going to be using a camera like the a6400 here, um, you're not gonna wanna use this method. You're gonna wanna listen on and use something like a capture card, which I'll talk about later. But if you bought a nice a5100 on sale, for example, or one of the cheaper digital still cameras, this is a pretty decent option. If you have any questions about today's video or you just wanna chat, come check me out on Twitch. I stream from Friday until Tuesdays. Love to see you there. Pop in and say hello. So before you get the software installed, you're going to want to do a few things with the camera. Make sure that you grab your micro USB cable, um, preferably the one that came with the camera as it's uh, most likely to work. And you're going to want to change a setting on your camera. You're going to change the USB connection to PC remote. So first we'll just quickly go over which cameras are supported currently by the software. It works with most of the Alpha Series cameras, which I'm sure most people are going to be using this with. Unfortunately, however, it does not work with the A6000. Um, it works with the A5100, which is a cheaper camera, but it did come out later. So I guess that was the turning point for when the cameras would be supported. The nice thing is here you have your full list. Um, you go ahead and select your model. And when you do so, the download button will be here. Go ahead and click download and just follow the steps and install your program. And now once you've got that all done, you install the program, make sure you restart your computer. Once you're booted back up in OBS or whichever software you're gonna be using the webcam in, um, it'll now be recognized as a webcam. So if we go here, we right click, add, and we do video capture device. Uh, let's call this one Sony. And now we're gonna go down and select Sony camera. And it will take a second. And there you go. Um, as you can already probably tell, the frame rate is atrocious. Um, our resolution, we don't really have many options here. We only have 1024 by 576, so it's not even 1080p. Um, we can do highest FPS, but it won't make a difference at all. And every time you do change a setting, it will load. So be aware of that, of that as well. And as you can see here, the quality just is not great. The frame rate is really choppy. Um, a few of the other um, YouTubers have already mentioned that like it sits at around like 14 to 15 frames per second sometimes. Um, so that's, that's pretty bad. Um, you're better off using a 1080p webcam that can do 30 frames per second at least. Um, or you can use a capture card, capture device like the Elgato Cam Link 4K like this. And now you can really see the difference in quality here, frame rate and everything. I'm at 4K 30, um, so everything's a little bit more crisp. And the movement is the big one, right? The frame rate, you don't want a choppy frame rate like that if you're going to be streaming or creating live content or creating YouTube videos, for example. But something like that could be okay if you were gonna be doing Skype calls, Zoom calls, conference calls, all that kind of stuff, where the frame rate isn't as important. Um, they just really need to see you. That totally viable option. But if you're gonna be streaming or you know creating content you're really gonna to wanna to go the capture card route for now. Now, I don't think that the software or the cameras are the issue here in particular, but I think it's the interface. So micro USB has a maximum rated speed of 480 megabytes per second. 
whereas USB-C can be anywhere from five to 10 gigabits per second. So on the newer cameras, like the A7S III, that do have USB-C, I do feel like the software might run a little bit smoother. I don't know if the software is optimized yet for that, but I do feel like in the future, once cameras are gonna have USB-C as a standard interface, this will become a little bit more viable. But I think right now with USB micro on most cameras, um, it's just, it can't handle the bandwidth. Now, another solution is picking up an inexpensive video capture card like this generic one here. Um, I picked this one up off of uh, AliExpress for around $8 and I picked up three of them actually. All right, so I got a whole bunch of them. Um, it was $8. If you don't wanna wait, you can get it on Amazon for anywhere from 15 to $24, I think. Um, and this one is really good. Um, Epos Vox actually does a re did a review of these where he was pleasantly surprised. Um, the only thing is these max out at 1080p, but you uh, you can you know really do a great job at 1080p. Um, it's not a huge difference. So let me go and show you guys a comparison between using the Elgato 4K, which is what I'm using now, this 1080p uh, no name brand capture card the new Sony webcam software and the original method that I had shown in another video, which I will um, link up here um, and we'll just compare the difference in the quality. So yeah, as you can see, using a capture card, even a cheap one uh, from AliExpress or Amazon, and even using your webcam, um, because of the frame rate issues with you know being around 14 to 15 frames per second, just looks so choppy and ugly. Um, using a capture card or an actual USB webcam for live streaming or content creation personally uh, is a better idea if you are just going to be using your mirrorless camera for conference calls and zoom calls and discord calls and stuff like that where the frame rate may, may be not as important then totally optimal solution and you don't have to buy anything extra you just use the cable that comes with the camera and you're good to go and also image quality wise going through the webcam software for the sony is relatively good you are still using a quality camera to capture that image so as you could tell before it didn't look bad other than the actual motion which is the frame rate issue but the image itself looked pretty good so again if the frame rate is not important to you um, using the Sony webcam software is a really good solution and it looks pretty good so I hope you guys found this video helpful if you did Please consider liking and subscribing, it really helps me out. Hit that bell icon to be notified of all my future videos. Next Friday, I'm actually gonna be reviewing a microphone combo from a company that reached out to me. So subscribe if you guys wanna see that review. Also, I will leave affiliate links um, and you know, I'll leave the AliExpress link for this down below as well if you wanna check that out. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Or as always, you know, go ahead and join the Discord if you wanna have a little bit more of a discussion. We can go over the different capture devices. Um, I can send you samples from all the different capture devices that I own. And as always, I stream on Twitch from Friday until Tuesday. Come check me out, come say hello in the chat. I'd love to see you there. You can ask any further questions there if you'd like as well. As long as I'm not, you know, too heated in a game of Counter-Strike or Fall Guys, I'd love to help you out. And I'll see you guys next Friday.